Hey, what's up? It's Zach, and today I'm back in Adobe Illustrator, and I'm going to show you how I use um, the Pathfinder tools and isolation mode kind of in tandem together to create some of these um, like dripping effects and stuff like that. And even more than that, it's just what, something I use like pretty much on everything, no matter the style. This is an illustration that's pretty much done for a client, and yeah, it's just something that I had laying around. But um, so to enter isolation mode, you just double click on something and as you can see it kind of puts a white overlay on everything else and you only see that and the cool thing about that is when you like click control a for like to select everything it's only going to select the stuff in there so it makes things a lot faster if you draw a lot within that and then click control a and then merge stuff together which i'll explain in a second what it does so this is my pathfinder window and if you don't see this, it's under Window, Pathfinder. And I pretty much keep it open all the time. Pretty much the only ones I use like a lot is Unite, um, Minus Front, Merge, and I use Crop a little bit too, but that's kind of for something super specific. And yeah, I'll probably explain that too. So I'm just using the Pen tool, so P, Shortcut, and um, let's say I want this to look like it's kind of, you know, going along this edge or whatever. Um, I'll just draw that. You can also hold shift to make, um, a straight line. So now I got this. Now, as you see, I have two objects. I have this, and I have this. In Adobe Illustrator, like, all those points and stuff can start adding up and it can get kind of confusing or just make your files super big so like I combine these together to keep the for one just to keep my past like as simple as possible for file size like I said but also just for editing purposes it helps me keep track of like where everything's at and stuff to combine these I would do unite and as you can see now it's one piece um, and it'll, like how I do a bunch of stuff like this is I would do the same thing as you can see, just kind of like wavy things. Um, and then I do subtract. Whoops. Accidentally un undid that. Um, with the subtract front, obviously you need to make sure it's in the front. But that's really the only thing. I use that to get most of my wave effects, like where it looks like it's cut out. I'm actually I'm just cutting stuff out. Uh, yeah, I use merge when there's a ton of stuff because sometimes Unite like acts weird. And also with merge, you can do multiple colors. So let's say I had an object that was white also and some objects that are blue. Okay, so I can just select all of it. I'm going to click merge and it's going to go ahead and combine everything that's the same color. So if it's the... Um, if something's the same color most of the time, I just click Unite, but if not, like if I just, at the end, a lot of times I'll select all my stuff and then do a final merge, and that's just going to combine everything that's the same color. Not necessarily, you don't necessarily need it, but it's useful to know. Say I wanted to, which this isn't actually done right, um, I wanted to just use part of this, like say I wanted to copy and paste, like, you know, one of the drips or whatever. Uh... I would actually, so I click control copy, or control C, control F to copy and paste it in place. I'm going to create a um, square with the mark like M and just draw that out. And then I'm actually going to use that to create a clipping mask over this, which is something else I do a lot. And that's control 7 to create the clipping mask. And now that I have this, um, you see it has that box around it, which just lets you know the object's still in there. So when you cr when you go into isolation mode, you actually have these two objects now. And then you can even go within that again to just edit this piece. After I'm done editing something like that that's clipped, I use the crop um, pathfinder tool to, and it goes ahead and crops that clipping mask. And that keeps it so that everything doesn't get like, you don't have a bunch of stuff in clipping masks and end up like not being able to edit things or, like the way you want in that oscillation mode and stuff. It, it could sound convoluted, but I promise when you like get in there and start working with stuff, it gets 
it makes a lot more sense of why you'd want to do this. But obviously, if you want to keep the editing capabilities of like you know moving an object within that mask, you're not going to want to do this. But um, yeah, so I just want to do this real quick and kind of explain a couple of those things. And yeah, I appreciate you checking out the video, and don't forget to like and subscribe.